It's now day three of the Off-Road Wrecker Games. Are you excited, Steve? I really am excited. It's been a, an amazing three days. Lots of things to remember. And today's going to be a much more low-key day compared to yesterday, and we need some a break. <laughs> yes, we do. Yesterday from, from was... From climbing up and down the mountain. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was excruciating in, at some times. You're right, you're right. Not every time. Uh, we were able to get an amazing parking spot <laughs> right at the main event, just parked across the street. And uh, this particular location has uh, more of a, a berm right there that we had to drop down. So what I actually needed to do is I raised this air suspension up to high and it made it so that we didn't scratch the bottom of the car coming off the road. Also yesterday all along here was completely parked full of cars and you can see that there's some here over in this direction but there's plenty of available parking right here next to the event. The weather is a little bit overcast and it's actually misting right now. I feel a little bit of rain, you can see a rainbow right here. It's really gorgeous. I'm at the exhibitor area and I wanted to start off by showing the Golden Nugget. This is obviously from the channel and really cool Rokon motorcycle that they redid. So if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go back and watch them where they made all of this. And then also when they recovered this from where it had been in the woods in California, I believe, for many, many years or decades. Yeah, these wheels are full of air, the, the hubs, and so it will float. Then they also have Matt's Samurai here. It looks like they didn't really improve the inside at all. <laughs> You said you used to sell these, right? Yes, Utah and the five states around it. I used yeah. to have the distributorship for them. Really? Yeah. Who, awesome. Who's the maker of it? Rokon. Who? Rokon. Rokon. R O K O N. What did they used to sell for? Uh, about thirty-five hundred. And that was back in the seventies. Yeah. Wow. So that, that well, was it might have been. No, it was actually the early eighties. Okay, so that was still that was a pretty penny to pay back in the eighties. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was plenty. So what did this have over other machines? ability to go anywhere. Mostly what it had was the ability to go over logs on the trail. Logs on the trail. I've been over logs that tall because both wheels have power so when you get this one up and you're you're centering on this one the back one will then throw you over. This one will pull you up and that one will throw you over. So we take it deer hunting everywhere. I've had uh, the one I had wasn't a trail breaker, it was, it was a uh, ranger, and I've had a deer on the front and a deer on the back, <laughs> and going up over logs and up trails and stuff, so you can get... Are they designed to go pretty slow, like that? Yeah, yeah for, uh, What's like a top this one, on this? This one, yeah, they've got this one set up. This is not normal, that's not normal, but, but uh, about 40, if you're in high speed, it's had three gears, uh, and if you're in high speed, it's you're talking about uh, yeah, maybe 43 to 45, something like that, That's which is cool. plenty fast. Well, plenty but fast you can't keep tires. up with the motorcycles. Yeah. I used to take it down with the Utah Trail Machine Association and and try to keep up with them. I could go places they couldn't go on the sandstone or on the you know, uh, but they they would leave me in the dust going down yeah. the trail. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Great machine. I like how they have this dual sprocket. It's coming from the engine on the one side yeah. and then goes through to the other side yeah. to power the back tire. Look at these foot pegs. <laughs> just, yeah. just a rod. And that was. Oh, it goes up? Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's quite the riser on that hitch. I love it, it says Golden Nugget right there. Super custom. Also out here. I 
I'm just going to walk down the row of exhibitor booths right now and just give you an idea of all the exhibitors that are here. This is why he was towing with just a uh, Yankum rope yesterday, is because this broke, this hinge, which is supposed to be this support to to hold it with the straps so and, and the boom. So that explains that. We didn't notice that on the trail. This is Merlin's truck.
It's just the concept. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. They've purposely broken so a whole bunch of their the little, devices uh, so that they can the show flashlight. how it breaks and at so how many pounds. And then they have the certificate so of testing here. The various test if results of having broken system. these so various you devices. Up, your system, you get a lot of those too. If you want to do a change of direction, you set it up, it's all ready to go. So it keeps that, keeps that in there. If they do, they have them. But I just push in. You can buy something like that. We have David Wong here. He's got, he, he's the driver of this, uh, what would you call it? It's a moon buggy. Jesse Haynes is the mastermind that built this single seat moon buggy it's made for rock crawling right that's awesome and i was noticing that the engine back here is right behind the seat so how yeah. do you control or mitigate the heat on your back so the engine the exhaust the radiator is all right behind me these cars are built to win so it's not really about comfort it's also our courses are 10 minutes at a time yeah so oh, okay for a trail ride it gets pretty hot sometimes if you're out wheeling for a half hour yeah um, it is fairly open air, so it dissipates heat, but it's designed to win 10 minutes at a time. Um, most of the things on here, it's not an issue because it's only 10 minutes. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Have you heard of anybody building any electric rock crawlers? There's, so depending on what you're talking about, cars like this, I know three people building electric really? rock wow. crawlers right now. Um, are there any already in existence that are being used? Or Not a rock crawler, but rock racers. Like, okay. I don't know if you've heard of Ultra 4 or King of the Hammers. Yes, I have. King yeah. of the Hammers has a class for electric vehicles. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And there's been two or three that have been built, mm -hmm. and at least two that have raced that I know of. Wow. Um, so it's... It's happening. It's happening, yeah. And so three being built right now, and then I assume they'll be done. We don't know when, maybe, but... I don't know, because I'm not involved. Sure. It's just people I know. Yeah. I think one will be done in the next year, for sure. Actually, probably two. The one's still just a chassis and some motors. Yeah. Uh, but I know the guy, and he doesn't have time to make it last forever. He's a shop. He's what he does, uh, build vehicles. So I imagine his will be ready in the next year. Do you have any insights into if they're doing, like, a motor on each hub, or, yeah, like, the architecture of it? So the only one I know about is a local guy that's building similar chassis to this single seat. The motor is just taking the place of the actual motor. So there's still a transfer oh, case. Yep, okay. Um, so it's a single electric motor. Single electric And then the rest motor. of the transmission, well, it probably doesn't no have a transmission. transmission. Yeah. Yeah, just a transfer case. Right. And then drive lines out of that. Right, okay. Um, 
and really that's all that's in his shop right now is the chassis, the engine motor. Yeah, and, so it's early uh, stages it sounds. Yeah, but he, the guy that's designed it is an aerospace guy. Ah. So he's got the whole car drawn up somewhere. Right. You know. That's cool. I Maybe someday we'll see that out there crawling around. Probably <laughs> next year, yeah. All right, thanks for sharing. Sure. And you mentioned that you just started a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, Club 42 Racing. And I'll put that in the link in the description below, too. And I'm, I'm Dave Wong. Dave, Dave Wong. Wong. All right. Anyway. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Yep, no problem. Look at this really old wrecker. This is super cool. You have a boom here on the back. And look at that. It's a hand crank boom that goes to this chain, a link chain. That is so cool. And then the back end here is kind of interesting that they got like a leaf spring, but it ends right there. And this one goes that way. So it's a different design than normal, at least today's normal. This boom is mounted on wood, wood blocks, wood beam, toolbox. And then the interior is pretty much all rotted away, all the soft parts anyway. And the roof looks like it probably was wood as well. And then we took the axle text because I actually built the Mega Ram Runner for Diesel Brothers, but I didn't think it was right to have them out here. So we took these narrow set of axle texts and we narrowed them another uh, 18 inch. So these are the same thing Matt finally put under his, but here's where we took nine inches out of each side. There's been no paint work on this at all. This is all original from the original build or and, us putting the axles. And the original four-cylinder engine would have been hand crank, mm -hmm. so that's why it's there. Yeah. Yeah, I still have some of the original little Yellowstone buses. I just didn't get them out today. <laughs> and, and so you're saying that this is originally a Yellowstone bus. Yeah, for... you see this says white. Right. And if you come over on this side, you'll see the original data tag of the 1917 packs, which is right back in here on the Oh, yeah. Huh, cool. And a lot of times we think we do everything better, but the reason, <laughs> and I brought the other t tow truck here, if you look at the, the Model T pickup truck from 1925 versus this, yeah. these are the white springs, these are the Yellowstones. It was a much heavier duty, robust chassis. So somebody got the idea, says, hey, we need a bigger tow truck than that. Mm -hmm. And this is what they come up with. Wow. Crazy. And then that wheel in the back is what they had for wheels. Yep, back and they were originally 42 body inch tires. Uh, so we went with these 46s. Underneath, you'll see these track bars. Those are original. They built track bars before we ever did, and that's the original yellow really? from the Yellowstone bus. Yeah. And we've got two in the rear and one in the front. Huh. And the cool. cab has the original leather seat. This is an original Henry Ford black. You can get one color black. And then this has the best preserved steering wheel for many of those whites. Wow. And it still has the, you know, advanced and retard and the gas settings on it. We used to hand crank it. <laughs> so, I know. We need to go. You're getting wet. We need to get is, you out of the room. Is this a uh, lock wrench? Is that original? <laughs> uh, no, that's just kind of Americana. We just do with what we got. Yeah, it yeah. It works. <laughs> Uh, the main windshield is, is original and so is the other. If you look at the glass, it's running down. You know, we put a little piece of plexiglass because we broke this out on a recovery a while back, the left driver's window. Uh-huh. Huh. So, yeah, cool. so I would venture that this is one of the first heavy-duty wreckers enclosed in the United States. Really? And I'm sure it's the oldest operating one. Wow. Yeah, we saw it. And around. it was 1979, you said? 1976, so they were still using it. I have the original oh. cap card when we got it. When would it have been originally built? We we're probably right around 1933, 34. Wow. But it was in continuous operation at Yellowstone, so you'd get off the steam engine and get out and you'd set a horse and buggy. The, the Model Y was the first motorized transportation in any of our parks starting in 1970. Awesome. Wow. Well, thanks. Thanks for so showing much. us, yeah. Well, absolutely. They're, they're my favorite, they're my passion. Who can tell? Well, I says Matt's seen this work. We were out on, uh, we were out, uh, on a classic run on the Utah Winter 4x4 Jamboree. Oh, my name's Steve Maxfield. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's seen it. It just flat out works. Yeah. So. And so you actively still use it? Oh, yes. We were up on the mountain yesterday with them. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were I up saw on the mountain. I didn't notice it. I did. Cool. Thanks for sharing. I'm surprised you weren't on the trail. 
<laughs> well, maybe next year. I just got a text. I, well, I saw Matt, and we're out the relic run. I heard there was something going on with the record games. I'm like, Matt, is there something going on? Do I get an invite? Oh, no. And last minute, I run all these six store jeeps. I says, Hey, it's too late to add you to the record games, um, but you got some of the neatest stuff around. And plus, can you come help us run people around in the six store jeeps? So well, thank you we so jumped down, and that was awesome. you know, we love helping out our off road community. Oh, sure. Awesome. Oh, yeah, you got to see this. Go to the other side. The other side has exhaust whistle on it. Exhaust whistle? Yeah. Oh. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, that, that is. That's one of the first safety features. You didn't have electricity on these back in 1917. So and it's... that is an exhaust whistle that they designed for these buses. Yeah. Most of them are underneath, so you never see that. But if you oh. inverted it, put it right out here on the side, it was just absolutely. So where is it normally? Normally it's underneath. Okay. So originally it was underneath the exhaust on the buses. So you never saw it, but this guy could have converted it and put it up up top so you could actually see it. Yeah, it drives well. Well, as you can see, the weather has turned and it is very wet. Here's the door that was on Merlin's truck that he towed. They've got the signatures. This is trail welding. What is a premier power welder? It is an alternator driven welding system. What kind of RPM do you have to maintain in order to be able to weld? It's not a ton and it varies with each vehicle, uh -huh. but you, you flip it on when it's idling, just uh -huh. at idle, and then you bring your RPMs up just enough to where your, oh, okay. your needle's in oh. the weld area. It's not much. It doesn't take much. So when it's on, it disengages the charging system of the vehicle. That's not charging the, the battery when you're welding. Off, it's your regular charging system. Yeah. Oh, so you bolt it to the vehicle and yes. leave it there. Is it a stick welder then? Yes. Okay. It's time for the announcements of who won and the raffle drawing. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much more because it's been raining for a bit, but it isn't right now and that's nice. $40,000 worth of giveaways, 70 items that we're going to be giving out to all of you. So here's how it's going to go down. Are we bringing up the vendors to the poll or we're we just going to go with it rapid fire? We're going rapid fire. Oh, Matt's pulling. Oh, I'm pulling it up. Let's give a huge shout out to Milestar for helping out with this event. They're amazing. They're crushing it. And this is really awesome. We've got Five tires coming from Milestar. What number do you have there, Matt? The number is 1538611. We have right, a winner. We somebody. McJudge faces <laughs> to the front. Get up here in a line. Now, I want you to know right up front, this game, these games were rigged. And you're looking at the ones who rigged them. These judges, they are, they are corrupt. They are, their moral compass is spinning like a turbo. Where do you go? All right, we're looking for something for these judges that's been misplaced. We apologize. We are brand new at this. We have a special award for one of these guys. I am super bummed. We had a plaque made up that said most corrupt judge for the first ever off-road record games that we were going to get to whoever had the highest bribe count, but it's in Tom Tom's truck an hour away from here. Yes, this is a metaphor for the keys. So, but do you guys want to know who was the most corrupt judge? All right. 
Okay, Rudy. Rudy, how much money did you take? I took away $210. All right, Chad, let's hear it. I was pretty weak, like 50. Alan? About 20 pounds of Skittles. <laughs> Robbie? $81. <clears throat> Plus 500. <laughs> $581. All right, Connor, what did you take? I just had Merlin make me a hot dog. <laughs> Any cash at all? I made like 40 something bucks, but the hot dog was better. <laughs> all right, Chris. 70 even. That number sounds made up. <laughs> all right, Brad, how about you? Only 60 for me. Matt, bleeping Jeep, how much money did you take? I got $11.45 Dr. Peppers. <laughs> Colt from bleeping Jeep, what do you got? I got $30 and about half as many Dr. Peppers that I gave to Matt. <laughs> All right, Ruby, how about you? I got a sausage, a half a case of Diet Dew, and 26 bucks. All right, she's coming sounding pretty clean. Not too corrupt. All right, Scott, what do we got? 36 bucks, a sprained ankle, and a sore hip. <laughs> Did the sprained ankle and the sore hip go against or for your driver? I'm trying to get out of Merlin's way. You're not the only one. All right, the Colonel. I was committed to take no money. It didn't seem right. I was against it. But Merlin, or sorry, Rory started putting $3 in my pocket, and that was more weird, so I just took it from him. <laughs> okay, no follow ups. All right, Casey Liddell, what do you got? Zero dollars. Uh, a little boy named Mateo came over and told us that the international that me and Ben brought was his favorite truck of the event, so I gave all my bread money to him. Good job, Mateo. All right, George. I, I knew you were corrupt coming into it. Let's see how corrupt. I would love to say how corrupt I was, but I actually lost to Matt and the Colonel, and I got $36. But I got some money from a civilian. Five bucks. <laughs> it sounds like Robbie won the most corrupt judge. That baby face, Robbie. All right. So instead of giving you a nice metal plaque, we're going to give you this corrupt cardboard award that says most corrupt judge. <laughs> All right. Now. I might have been the most corrupt judge, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with it. 581, actually, there's $81 here, plus the colonel, he didn't tell you, he gave me all his money, plus another $580, plus another whatever this is, and this is going to Paige. That's awesome. If you love the banana, you're gonna love the plantain. The door off of Merlin's plantain, because less is more, as we found out yesterday. <laughs> they're gonna go, after the end of this event, they're gonna go over to Merlin's booth, and you can win this booth. He's gonna do a, an auction, and all proceeds are gonna go to Paige and the Blake family to help out. So if you want that, you can head on over for it. Thank you, Merlin. Thank you, Robert. Thanks to all these judges. Some of these guys had to ride in some very sketchy rides up some very sketchy things, some very sketchy people. So let's give it up to these guys for these guys. I need all the competitors, the five competitors right here, right here, up front. Line them up. It's cold. Get cozy and warm next to each other. I know. Next year, we're gonna do it earlier because uh, we all like sun, just saying that. We tallied up the numbers. Our fourth loser of the record games, <laughs> voted by the judges, 
they came together in consensus and decided that this person made it, the record games too boring, made all the obstacles yesterday look too easy, just walking through the park with no issues and no reverse. Our fourth loser of the record games, give it up for Matt with Matt's off road. That is the biggest excitement. He's got the trophy. <laughs> How do you feel about the fourth loser position? Do you think you deserve it? I think it's better than first loser. That sounds way worse. worse. And it does. It says fourth loser of the first ever off-road record games. And, and a trophy welded together by Rory, I understand, right? Why the mics were off, Rory was up here roasting, rubbing it in my face, how he had reverse and and how he welded this up and he put a sticker on it and I won't be able to peel it off. The next one up, our third loser of the first annual record games. This person has more tenacity than we've ever seen in our lives. Him and his team out there from the morning yesterday until late at night, they never stopped, never. Give it up for the OG BSF Eric. Loser, so you came all this way out here. You, I think, for for the truck you have, you were kind of the underdog of the competition, and you had a phenomenal run yesterday. So, what do you have to say about this? Well, I tell you what, I'm just glad that I finished. I'm glad I got to the top. You guys all left me. I had to do it myself, but I got to the top. I went. I got it done. There actually well at their own trophy so you know it's gonna hold up yeah. <laughs> it was meant to be to beat Matt congratulations for our first so first annual record games second loser this person put on a show reckless abandonment going crazy you always knew what to expect you got to be careful give it up for Paul Cox and the Fab Rats <laughs> I gotta say, 96 miles on a brand new motor, completely fresh built vehicle, first time out on the trail, really, at least, like, again, 96 miles on the motor, and it survived, and you did good, my friend. Yeah, she's uh, broke in now, we'll turn it up next year. Congratulations, my friend. I love it, okay. That leaves us with how many left? Should we have them come stand right here and kind of face against each other? Here we go. Okay. You got. Here we go. You gotta do that. Yeah, there, that's what we need. Yeah, come on. Fight mode. The winner of the first ever Wrecker Games. Drum roll. Drum I can't roll, hear guys. you. Get it going, get going, get going. I love me some cowbell. The wild card crazy man, Merlin! still says first on it. First loser, but it says first. Rory, I want you to turn it upside down and look at who made it. That's amazing. So what do you got there? You got a big old belt? It's heavy. <laughs> that is awesome. All right. 
You guys have not voted yet. We want to hear your vote, and we're going to do it by applause. I'm not going to do it because I'm in it. Well, let's bring up the trophy first. Let's see what the People's Please. Choice Award, the real one that matters. And here's what happens. The one that you pick, they are going to pick from the drawing to find out who won the amazing side-by-side, -side, the Matt's Off-Road Recovery World or Record Games side-by-side. -side. They'll be picking. So, Rudy, show us. What do they get? You see that? Yeah. Okay, so the People's Choice Award trophy on the plaque, it reads, the real winner of the first ever off-road record games. And you guys get to pick who the actual winner is. So, when it's time to applaud for your team, let's hear it. Awesome. Okay, you guys all stand right here. We're going to come behind you. When I put my hand over their head, you shout. Okay, here we go. For Merlin. <laughs> going to be a two-time champion? Oh, okay, here we go. For Eric. Okay. Sorry, Merlin. I'm just calling that right there. Okay. Let's go with Paul. That's really good. I I'm feeling we might have to come back for these two. Let's see what happens here. Let's give it up for Rory! Oh! What do you guys think? Did, did he pass you two up? What do you think? They don't know? <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. It's, it's oh, Rory. It's Rory. Okay, we're at Rory. We heard you. I don't want to get beat up. Please. Gosh, don't kill the messenger, people. Okay, why don't you come stand here, Mr. Fourth Place Loser? Oh, don't totally, he's on the muddy, so he needs to stay in line. Let's give it up for Matt! <laughs> is, is that a. I, hold up, let's try between these two right here. Let's make Rory stand Rory, here again. Rory! 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 There you have it, folks! The People's Choice! Everyone, it's been real. Good night. We've been saying the whole time, you guys are great. We'll see you again. We'll let you know what it is. And thanks for watching. And there you have it. This has been a ton of fun. Highly recommend coming next year when we find out when it is. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.